What in tarnation is this? Some sort of non-crackpot, bullshit, dumbass, bully-willy kind of ending? Ooh, that's a hot mug, guys. Hey guys, this is my review for Westworld Season 3. I decided to not do the episodes like I did the first time, also the second time, because admittedly the second season is so unwatchable. I watched it as it was premiering pretty much on the level throughout its run, and then it came to the finale. I tried to watch it, but I fell asleep, and I didn't feel the motivation to finally watch the finale until a week before season 3 premiered. Honestly, it's skippable. At worst, you could watch a recap of it, and that's all you need to watch. Because while Maeve one of my favorite characters of the show did have a great turn in that season. The season itself is totally pointless. Apparently they changed it around because oh, there was a big theory going around that was actually what was going to happen in season two and the writers decided to change it around and well, you saw what happened. Season three admittedly is a lot better. It's kind of a return to form for the show in terms of its intrigue and its blend between character drama and sci-fi tech technology. It's not as long as only eight episodes this time so there's not as much divergence with characters some people do not get as much character development as you would like others get a crap ton of development and really are a forward push for the show dolores obviously is the mainstay with aaron paul being a welcome change being a welcome addition to the show his character arc is a pretty cool idea as with his connection with Technically, you would say the antagonist of this season, who is played by Vincent Cassell, who, honestly, he's the best character the show's had since the first season in terms of a new character. Aaron Paul's good, but this guy's great, because while his big ball thing is literally the plot from iRobot, he is a great character in terms of a human godlike figure. His whole dial sort of balance of the world aspect at first was kind of weird, but then once you start to figure out what it means, and then when the whole rabbit comes out of the box, essentially about halfway through, something that this season did particularly well is that it didn't really give you a central protagonist. Sure, it gave you characters, main characters, but no one's really a good person in this show. You could say that the best person technically is Aaron Paul and kind of Jeffrey Wright, but Bernard is so, so underutilized in this season. He appears at the beginning, he appears kind of in the middle, and then he's there at the end. Jeffrey Wright was totally sidelined throughout this season. And honestly, it's kind of understandable considering what's going on. His purpose that Dolores wanted him to be kind of his version of him in check, it comes to more of an understandable situation at the end of the season, but you're kind of wondering the whole time what the hell is this dude's purpose because he's doing absolutely nothing except hanging around with the other other Hemsworth. Oh, um, one little note too. Definitely gotta talk about how good the music is. I'm not gonna try and pronounce this gentleman's name, but this guy is HBO's main score slash music deity. He is amazing. He was already doing music for Westworld. He was already doing music for Game of Thrones. This guy doesn't seem to see a challenge with anything. He's like, hey, we want you to do this show, but you're not doing any old timey music anymore. We want you to do it future based. We want you to do all synths and all this stuff. Yeah, sure. The music is so good in this season. It's the best music I'd say of almost the entire season, except for Heart Shaped Box in season two. That's still my favorite cover of this entire show. This season, there was also a lot of great covers. We got David Bowie, we've got The Weeknd, we've got Pink Floyd. There's a lot of really good covers. It takes a little bit to figure out what they are. Once you do, you're like, eh, damn, that's a great addition. That's a great cover. But on for the negative parts, there are some points in this season where it kind of dragged. It didn't really have a forward narrative for some bits, nowhere near as aimless as season two was, but there are some moments where, particularly with Maeve, her whole bit in the simulator. While it's kind of cool, I feel it takes a little bit too much time to really bring her back. Actually, Ed Harris, he's here, but he's also not here. He's also kind of someone who's sidelined, but essentially in terms of his purpose to the show, it doesn't really matter as much in this season. He is 
rightfully so pushed to the side because he's not one of the main people anymore it's stuff that's around him or characters that just are never near him that have the more purpose so that's why he's sidelined as he is. Admittedly, there are a few parts where you kind of just have to take the story as it's coming. You kind of have to assume things. It's not a plot hole, at least to say, but it's not fully explained either. Either way, though, it's still a great season in comparison to season two. It definitely revitalized my hope in the show, and it ends on a pretty cool cliffhanger, too, with certain characters. I enjoyed this season. I think it was good. Hell, I'd even rewatch it because of the content, the music, and just how short it was. I, I do appreciate this eight episode ideal I think we should keep with this while some people may disagree with this but I feel that sometimes it is better when you need to cram your story in and try to shave off what's unnecessary rather than trying to bolster and bloat a story to try and fill a quota. All of the Netflix Marvel shows, for instance. In the end, I'm gonna give season three of Westworld a five out of seven. I enjoyed it, I think it was fun. I was pleasantly surprised. I'm looking forward to season four whenever that happens. Either way though, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Just on a side note, I am going away for a week, so I won't be able to do really good reviews for a while. I'm gonna do a few maybe off of my phone, but you just won't see me for a while. That also means that the conversation between Jade and I is not gonna be done as early. There's a few other videos that are obviously gonna be on the sideline, the Lord of the Rings, Return of the King, but I will do those when I come back. Anyways, guys, stay safe out there, wash your hands, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.